In this video, we're going to take this next step further and create our own fracture and destroy our own wall. So instead of creating bricks, what we're going to do this time around is I'm going to come in here. And before I forget, let's go ahead and just drop us down to say 72 frames. And uh, let's create another geometry node. And this one we're going to call concrete. And uh, we're going to create our own fracture design. Again, we're not using any of the shelf tools up here. We're going to do this on our own. Uh, I'm going to come up here and just ghost other objects. Actually, I'm going to hide other objects for now. And we're going to treat this as if we're in our own little scene. What I'm going to do now is create a box. And let's create a nice wall. We'll just, uh, I don't know, grow this way up. It's pretty big. 10. I'm going to say, let's, let's go ahead and grow this way up as well. I'm going to take this copy parameter, put this under the center, and we're going to paste relative reference. I'm going to divide that by 2. It's a neat little trick if you don't know. This will, la uh, this will lock your object to the y-axis origin, which is 0. And then I'm going to come over here onto the Z. Let's go ahead and shrink this down. Let's say let's go 0.25. Nice and thin. A little concrete wall that we have here. This will work for us. We'll call this concrete wall. Now, to fracture this, what we want to do is we want to come down here and give it, uh, create some points. So there's a number of ways to do this. The simplest way is just to create a scatter. The problem with this is this scatter only happens on the edges, as you guys can see right here. So because of that, we're going to want to scatter off of density. To do that, let's go ahead and turn this into a volume. So I'm going to do an ISO offset. And there we go. And uh, we'll need like 100 sampling divisions. This works. And then from there, we can scatter. And now we'll have some points in the interior. And if we scatter on voxels independently, you'll see that um, this looks a little bit better. We'll increase the density scale. I'm actually going to reduce it. I don't want that many points for this first sim. OK. And then what we can do is add in a Voronoi fracture. So this Voronoi fracture, first input, we want our main geometry. Second input, we want the points that we're going to use to fracture off of. And then let's go back to frame one. And let's just go ahead and cook that. And you'll see that we get this nice layout right here. And uh, basically what's happening is it's, it's fractured. If I come over here and use an exploded view, this is not something that um, is necessary for our tree, but it's just going to tell you what's actually happening. And it's actually creating all of this fracturing for us. We can play with some of the settings here uh, to get um, a different look and a different detail. You can see that the angles will change. Okay. Uh, and like I said, you can play with these uh, as much as you want. Uh, what I actually want here, though, is I want to start to assemble these pieces. So I'm going to go ahead and add in a rest position and an assemble. Okay, let's go ahead and just pipe these together. And the assemble, uh, we want to create packed primitives. And you'll see that each point or each primitive gets its own point, just like we did in the last video with the brick wall. And from here on out, it's essentially the same. Oh, I also forgot to add in a normals. Let's add the normal here. Perfect. And let's go ahead and add a null. And we'll do an out wall. Call this actually out concrete. Let's go ahead and add this into a uh, dot network. So let's add a dot network here. Dive in. And just like before, we're going to do a rigid body solver. We'll do a gravity. We need a merge. We need a RBD packed object. Put that up here. And we need a ground plane. So we'll do ground plane, rigid body, into gravity, into here. Let's go ahead and add in our um, out concrete. Hit accept. There we go. And if I hit play, the wall's just going to fall apart again because we don't have any glue constraints just yet. We need to add those in. So let's go ahead and do that now. And while we're at it, let's go ahead and add our active group just like we did in the last video. So to do that, I'm going to do an attribute create. 
and let's go ahead and call this active. We want an integer uh, on points, and we want this one and one by default. And then what I'm going to do is just go ahead and duplicate that now by holding down Alt, add that here. And what we'll do is go zero, zero. Let's add a group. Switch that to points. Put that in there. We'll call this pin. And let's go ahead and just uh, keep in bounding regions. Hit enter here. And what I can do is just drag that over. Uh, we'll probably have to make this one a little bit bigger. So we'll go up there. And then we'll come over here. Make sure this is to pin only. Cool. So our main tree should be ready to go. Let's go ahead and add in our constraints. Now, one of the cool things with the Voronoi Fracture, though, is it actually has a constraint geometry output. But we got to pay attention here because the naming is actually happening down here. This is why I like to teach uh, students how to do it out of the assembly node first because the naming is kind of taken care of for you. So we need to actually pay attention here. Thankfully, from the Voronoi and into the assemble node, the names usually do not change. And in fact, I might be able to get away with coming in here and uh, turning off the create name attribute. And you'll see that the name attribute uh, doesn't change. It stays as a piece. Um, so it, it does work. So let's go ahead and do the attribute create. And we're going to call this constraint name let's do a point i'm sorry a primitive let's go to string and we'll call this glue and then we'll just do a null we'll call this out constraint and so this should be done properly and this is one less node with our other tree uh and if we come over here to the primitives there it goes glue this one actually comes with a rest length, and that is because the Voronoi Fracture comes with that attribute uh, by default. So just be aware of that. It shouldn't affect anything too much. Let's dive into the dot network. I'm going to create my constraint network here. And then my glue constraint relationship, pipe that into the second input. We need to add the SOP. So out constraint, accept. And if we did this right, press W, you'll see that the constraints are in here now. And we'll just hit play, and they are not falling apart. Cool. The glue is done. So the next thing left to do is to add in a projectile. So let's go ahead and add in that sphere. Uh, make sure that I'm going to do a primitive here, so it's packed already. And uh, I don't need to resize this bad boy, so I'm just going to move it around. Um, I definitely want to go here. We'll go this way. Um, well, actually, just kidding. We'll go this way. Uh, and up. And let's go ahead and go null. Out. Projectile. Two. Because we have another one in the scene. Just for me. For my sake. And uh, let's go up here. We'll do an RBD packed object. Grab this this and just hold down alt if you don't know how to do that by the way you just grab this hold on shift grab that one hold down alt let go of everything and then you'll get this and i just want to kind of keep this clean and then we'll just go over here and we'll add in projectile two there it is and we got to give it a velocity so let's just say 25. and now oh going the wrong way negative 25. i wasn't paying attention we'll give it negative 25. And then boom, there we go. And we already have our active group down there. And now you have your first Voronoi Fracture Sim. These last two videos are just a basic introduction into RBD. Here on out, we're gonna start expanding upon these concepts. We'll even learn how to multi-layer these sims together and do a simultaneous sims to get more dynamic looking scenes that look more realistic, where we're fracturing a wood object next to a concrete object or maybe a brick object in front of, uh, in, with mortar and rebar. We'll be looking at through the next videos as they come up. Let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Are you finding these types of tutorials helpful? If not, I'd love to hear back from you. If it's your first time here at the channel, please be sure to like and subscribe to this channel. And remember, always be creating.